see results today. Let's go. These two are pumped. Bit of banter there. How do I get the best start to year 11? Well, you got to focus. Actually, I've got the answer to this. It's exam focused and it's about a targeted approach to your studies. Yo dude, checking in with you, apologies for the delay. Been peppered with messages recently, but gonna come back to you with an answer to your question. So, how can you actually crack on and smash the beginning piece of year 11? Well, what you need to do is if you wanna do well in your exams, you gotta realize that, yeah, it's about going to class and enjoying the information you're learning and all that stuff, but exams are a performance kind of sport at the end of the day. That's why I'm the exam coach. I believe it's like a sport and you can treat it like that. So you have to understand where the goalposts are. How do you score goals? What What's the scoring system? So the first thing you should do is to every single teacher you have is ask them for three things. Ask them for the syllabus, so you know what you're doing the whole year and you've already got the bird's eye view of everything. Ask them for some past papers. So what's happened previously, you wanna get all the past papers on deck ASAP, and then you wanna get the mark schemes as well. You wanna know what the right answers are, what kind of answers, how you phrase things, the styles examiners are looking for. Lawrence, I didn't pass my English exam, dude. Hey man, that's tough. We just go again, we rebuild, we keep attacking, we go at it, that's how we roll. So pick yourself up, dust yourself off, Crack on with a bit of English, and don't let it beat you, man, I believe in you. From Marcus. Right, so I'm really stressed out about my GCSEs next year because I feel like I've not been paying attention for the last four years of high school, and I don't know what to do. I'll tell you what to do, Marcus, and this is exactly what I did. Well, you got to hit cruising speed pretty sharpish, don't we? But I know what he's talking about. You know, you're daydreaming in class, you haven't got the pressure of exams, so you can just coast. Yeah, you get a few crappy reports here and there. Check that video on my website if you want to see some of my crappy reports. I had teachers laying into me. You know, I was very, I, I had a lot of self-belief and that overspilled into mucking around, not listening, thinking I was, you know, the bee's knees when really I wasn't. Marcus, it's the exam coach checking in with you, gonna answer your question. So, how do you, how do you recover from not paying attention for four years and being behind on stuff? Number one, what you gotta do is you gotta understand what you're gonna be tested on. You gotta understand the syllabus. You gotta understand the range of it. What is the content that's gonna be tested for in the exam? Because you never know, there might be some stuff that you do know on there. And also what it'll help you do is it'll help you really pin down, okay, I was daydreaming in that class two years ago and that's being tested for on the exam, so I better sharpen up my act there and understand that stuff. So get the syllabuses first. For every single subject that's a syllabus, ask your teacher, that is basically what can be on the exam. They are not legally allowed to test you on anything that is not allowed, not on that syllabus. So get those first, that's your map. Get your map out. Number two is your scrambling game. I call it that because you are essentially scrambling, right? You've, you've not paid attention. I remember doing this, you know, you're daydreaming in a class and I did it on a micro level. You're daydreaming in a class, you're, the teacher's saying something, you switch back on, you're like, what the hell has just gone on there? And then you you don't want to put your hand up and ask a question because you, you seem like a blonker. You literally just have to say, what were you just saying? I just wasn't listening. So you got to figure out, right, how do I actually, you know, get the information into my head that I just missed? On a micro level, so I'm talking about class to class where you don't pay attention, what you do is after the class, you go to the person that definitely was listening in the class and you say, hey, you know that bit just in between when the teacher was talking about this and that, you quiz them on it and you say, what were they talking about? And then they'll give you that info, right? And that's how you stay up to speed, even when your attention spans a bit crap. I did that and it works. Third thing you wanna do, it's the macro scrambling game. What this is, is it's where you've gone vast chunks of time without paying attention and not having a clue what's going on. First thing you wanna do, try emailing your teacher and saying, look, I, I put my hands up, I just don't get this topic. Please, could I have 20 minutes of your time and you go through it with me? That's number one, that's what you pull. Number two is go to the smartest kids in the class who do know this stuff. I did it with maths so many times. I had this guy called Sharp, he was called Sharpie, called him the sharpshooter. Uh, he was a tank at maths, literally a beast. And I just didn't get it. But I always went to him and said, look, man, I know you've you've got this down. Can I just copy your notes from two weeks ago? And I looked at how he was doing it. I was like, okay, I get it. This is how he's doing it. And then he explained it to me. 
and we just go over and over and over again and you know I'd help him out with other stuff that he needed help with and it was like a two-way street like that and as long as you're nice nice about it and you just accept that you're not like you're just better than me at this man like I just want to learn from you go in humble accept that other people your own age even maybe younger than you in the year below if they're just better than you at a subject just accept it just be like hey you are better than me at this and I just want to learn from you and come in from that humble angle of just learning and appreciating that they put in the work and the time and the skill to get good at it then if you if you show an interest in what people are good at they're always going to want to help you out from a sincere and uh, you know giving point of view they're going to want to help you out so go for that scrambling game crucial to exams exams just aren't about your relationship with the teacher they're about your relationship with the rest of the class and how you can you know use that to put you in the best position to succeed in your exams help other people but that also have them help you two-way two-way street and that's the opportunity right there right let's crack on through these messages little sap snap streak checking in checked in checking in done okay Lizzie I'm really slow at working for example I can hardly have done my work slash revision in an hour I find it difficult to know what to write to summarize things and I overcomplicate things plus I'm easily distracted and lose focus okay Lizzie checking in with you first point about being slow don't worry about it I remember what that felt like when you know teacher would say hey I want I want the class to read through this paragraph and I'd be looking left and right being like wow that person's on page tick or or uh, like a couple of pages in a book that person's on two pages done and I'm on like the first sentence of reading and just the key thing is is just don't compare yourself to other people because you know when you're looking over your shoulder the whole time you're not looking forward yeah you got to be looking forward and right and saying okay I'm just gonna build at my own speed and then eventually you will get there and you will be quick you will be efficient you will be fast and you will be getting done stuff done a lot of stuff done in an hour first step is just get inside your own head and be like right I'm just gonna go through this at my own pace make sure I understand it and I'm learning this information and trying to get the work done as fast as I can but I'm not gonna beat myself up if I'm going to be a little bit slow I need to work at it with your summarization just try and think about it in the most simple terms so a way that I use to actually guide me is I'd use the syllabus and mark schemes to take notes so for example I'd go through a page of text in a book on a topic and I'd look at the syllabus and the mark scheme and say right what kind of stuff is being mentioned in the mark schemes in the syllabus the keywords the facts the dates whatever it might be and when I'm going through the, the, the text notes I'd be sure to pull those things out because they're going to get tested on right and then you remember them word for word like rote learning you remember how it's phrased how it's put you know the different the different kinds of words in the question that come up and then the different answers that that are needed so try and use that to target your stuff a bit the summarization piece really can be guided by the syllabus the syllabus and the mark scheme because when you know that you know what to pick out and what to summarize focus and distraction it's a huge topic it's difficult for me to like pinpoint something at the moment because I don't have enough information from you but I think obviously the smartphone is just key like if you can do anything during revision sessions to limit the, its ability to distract you you're gonna be in a great place whether that's turn you know silent mode vibrate airplane mode out the other room all that kind of stuff if you can do that I would highly recommend it just for the revision sessions and the other thing is just think about stuff in a bit more like it, it sounds bad but selfish terms like you want to achieve something you want to want to get something done you need to focus on yourself you need to work on yourself you need to be less focused I'm assuming you use social media you're on snapchat on other people's lives and what's going on there it's not it, it does sound selfish and technically it is but I would say it's a good type of selfishness in small amounts and you should do that during exam season for sure Bane, it's going to be a huge year. You got GCSEs coming up. We are going to crush them, smash them out the park. They don't stand the chance. Rory, mate, cracking work. Chuff for you. You've dominated there. You've absolutely smashed the grades out the park. They didn't stand a chance. I knew it. You knew it. You've nailed it. Let me know anything I can do to help. We'll keep building. We'll keep growing. This is just the start, mate. You've got the ball rolling now. 
Now what you do is you continue to smash your exams, but then you branch out. You look at other avenues where your interests lie, and then you figure out, right, career-wise, what do I want to be aiming at? I've got this skill set from exams, this you know, organization, work ethic, time management, the ability to push through difficult situations, the ability to handle pressure, that can be applied anywhere. All this stuff, you're gonna throw it all in, into your career and what you wanna do, that big North Star that you're aiming at, and you're gonna crush it. Here we go. Kiko, building the road to A-Town. Building that wall, over time you're gonna look. We are. Building that wall. We are building that road. Boom. Love that. We always build, whether it's the road to A-Town, whether it's a wall to A-Town, the wall around A-Town. A-Town's being built 24-7, 365. That's how we roll. Okay, cruising now, cruising, cruising. Streaks, more streaks. So whenever someone sends me a streak, I just send them a check-in. <laughs> Have a tongue out on that one, can't send that. Check-in in, another streak, another check-in. I'm year 10, I, D I DK what I need to do to get better. I'll tell you what you need to do to get better. You need to put in the work, crack on, get up for it, treat every day like it's, you know, game day, and you press on. I'm gonna deliver that info. Yo bro, checking in with you. If you're in year 10, unbelievable time to be at in terms of impacting the trajectory you can go in your life. If you want one tip, it's gonna be real simple, but put in the work, like, don't take anything for granted. Uh, treat every day as like a game day, all in, go for it, be up for it. Like, I remember when I was 15 and my mood's up and down. You're gonna get that, right? Anybody gets that when they're growing up. But try to be appreciative of, crap, I got a great opportunity here. Let me take advantage of it. Because I guarantee you, when you're in your mid 20s and you're looking back on that time, that's when you can develop, you can grow. It gets a lot harder to do that when you get set in your ways and you start getting reference experiences which don't really give you that much confidence. You can get some good reference experience and be, be amazing and dominate. When I saw your story before my exams, I cut back the amount of time I was on my phone for to replace the revision. I got my GCSE and they were so much better than my mock results. I was so shocked, so thank you. Izzy, you're a legend. You're a legend of the game. Izzy, checking in with you. I appreciate you saying thank you. And you, you know, it's, it makes sense, right? You would have been able to do that yourself. It's not rocket science. Everybody knows that this device, it's a great device and it can be used to do amazing things, in, including learn. But sometimes you gotta be, well, a lot of the time you gotta be in control of it, right? You need to know what you're doing with it. You need to be deliberate about what you're looking at and when you're looking at it. And if I helped you in any way, just even by just calling that out and then you being like, right, I've got to not look at Snapchat publisher channels when I'm trying to revise or when I get up in the morning, make sure I look at positive stuff that gets me upbeat and in the mood and motivated. That kind of thinking, that's great. And just continue doing it. And I'm going to be putting out tips on the way I do it for me and how what works with my smartphone uh, in order to get me to achieve my goals. But if you come up with anything, do it. Like experiment, go for it. This is all new, by the way. This hasn't been around long. iPhone got invented 10 years ago. All new, let's go. M Ban, sick name. I'm checking in with you. Let me know if I can help in any way. Stay tuned to Snapchat. If you wanna join the WhatsApp broadcast list, let me know. I can add you to that, that's very useful. It summarizes all the content that I do each week. And I'm checking out right now. Hi mate, I'm struggling at the moment in A-level exams, not with knowledge, but exam structure. I've been doing so well getting straight A's in my mocks and then I get a D in my AS. Okay, uh, A-town to D-town, that's a big one. I might be of stress, I don't know. In year 13, planning to do just two lots of past papers and exam conditions to get used to exam styles and writing different questions. This guy just needs a seven day exam plan, I'm not even gonna lie. Like. It just gets him sorted straight up. So crucial that you get, so, so crucial that you get your exam routine down, otherwise it will happen. Like you, you will go in there knowing information and then you'll panic or something will throw you off track and you won't be able to execute performance. Bro, checking in with you, totally get it. You've gone from A town to D town, I've had it before. You know, you're panicking in the exam. It is, it is because of stress, under pressure. 
you do, you know, you forget things. You don't read the question properly. You don't give the examiner the answer in exactly the form they want to see it. You forget all the basics. It's all that stuff, right? And my one recommendation on that is, like, if you want to keep on doing the pass papers and the mark schemes, cool. I don't think that's the issue for you. What I think the issue is, is that you don't have a routine around what you're doing in each exam that makes it clear every single time, this is what I do, and then this is the result I get. So for example, you do a pre-exam, a during exam, and a post-exam routine that looks exactly the same. Pre-exam, you stand in the same place, you listen to the same song, you, you do the same flashcards in the same rotation per subject. During the exam, you don't look at anything around you. You're totally focused. You look at the desk and the clock, only two things the whole time. You know when you're looking up at the clock throughout the paper for each paper. Post exam, you're not chatting to anyone about, you know, oh, what did you put for question 4D? What about 2B? Oh, I put three, you put six. The guy next to him put six. Obviously that's the right answer. We don't do any of that. You just crack on, get back up into, you know, the study or wherever you're doing your revision, you hit another power sesh. It's that kind of routine that allows you to withstand a lot of pressure because that's the scaffolding that you stick to and then you can see all those tricky questions and like uh, times pressure situations as things that can nudge you off of that but you just stick to it and draw it back to the center and you'll find that very very rarely are you ever going to be flustered or not know what to do in an exam situation because you're remembering the basics remembering read the question remember how the mark scheme structured what does the examiner want to see and then you do it each and every time you look at just the paper and the clock you don't look at anyone going to the loo you don't look at the guy to the left of you to the right of you you just focus the whole time so that's the first thing i think we've got to work on the basics your routine then we can work on the syllabus the papers the mark scheme because you know you can get an a it's not it's not knowledge that's the issue it's performance that's the issue have a go Oh, what's the best way to revise? Jackie B. Jack, checking in with you. So, want to give you a brief answer here. It's quite a big topic because I could go on a lot about what the best way to revise is because it sometimes is down to the person and how you learn. But the exam coach way of doing it is there's a few principles that you need to know about. The first one is it's active right you are you're doing it constantly you're always hammering this info into your mind so there's no rules about working there's no rules about oh you can only work at your desk we're working whenever we want to little reminders the whole time and what that does it feeds into two key principles of memorization and learning number one active recall being able to recall information without the information being in front of you number two spaced repetition that is testing yourself uh, in periods of time, right? Doing one test, leaving it for a bit, letting it leave your memory. And just before it does, you test yourself again and see if you can recall it. If you can't, you hit the books again, you recall it. And you do that for each topic in the syllabus. So you just go through your syllabus and literally like five bullet points of the answer to a particular type of question. You look at those five bullet points, you maybe write them out again, condense them a bit more, make them memorable, pick out the key words. That makes them memorable often. Uh, and then give it a bit of time. Maybe note them down on your phone as well. Maybe speak them into your phone so you can listen to them. Try and recall them without looking at the bullet points you wrote down. Uh, maybe just the keywords that you can recall. Then in a couple of days time, test yourself again without looking. If you can't remember one, go and have a look at it. Test yourself in another day's time. Constantly, it's like a gym routine, right? You hit the gym every other day, every other day. Boom, boom, boom. And then it's in your head. There's other more sophisticated techniques you can use, like memory, uh, like attaching things to objects around the room. Um, essentially like stacking up a story that's memorable for you. Memory champions use that. Useful for particular topics, but in terms of doing everything that way, I don't think I'd recommend that because it's a lot of stories and really like imaginary information that you've got to remember. Rather the active recall method where you've got a syllabus and you're just peppering out points and you can do it anywhere is very, very effective. Yo, mindset to do revision. Huge, huge topic. I will be doing more videos on this. I think one of the questions you can ask yourself is why are you doing this? 
What's the long-term vision? What's the long-term goals? What do you want to do when you're older? What skills are exams and revision building up for you? Well, for me, they built up organization, time management, the ability to handle pressure, knowledge in particular subjects. All that stuff is going to be built up over over the years. And, you know, th 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 there's other things I imagine you like doing apart from exams, but exams play a pretty big role in your life right now. So you might as well figure out what is the skills that I can take from this. And that should motivate you to do the revision, to achieve, to succeed, to overcome a difficult situation and prove to yourself that you can do stuff. But I will do more videos on this.